Hey everyone, in this video I thought I'd share some of my time-tested favorite teacher tech tips and tricks, things that have saved me time, sanity, and effort in the classroom. So I hope you enjoy. The first one I've been using for many years, even before I started using Google Slides or any of the Google Suite tools for my school, um, and this is embedding a countdown timer on slides. Now you can also do this in PowerPoint, um, but if you're using Google Slides, you can just simply insert a video and then have a countdown timer for however whatever desired length that you need for whatever you need in your classroom, whether you're doing a turn and talk and you want to time it that way, or whether you're having a students rotate through stations, or whether or not you want them to write and work silently for a set period of time, the timer is a great way to uh, set it on your slides so it's visible for everyone and it can help you keep track of the time as well. So here's an example from a lab rotation I did a couple weeks ago. We had six stations, the students did five minutes at each station, and then I just would hit play and reset the timer every time they rotated. And it was a great and easy way and I didn't have to keep track of holding a timer in my hand or walking around the room with a timer that way. Next thing is more for teachers who are doing labs or other activities that require a lot of materials. Uh, in my classes, often kids need to clean up and reset the lab for the next period before they go on. And so one thing I found extremely helpful is taking a picture of the bin or whatever lab station as you want to see it when the students are done cleaning up. And so this can go along with a cleanup slide that you project um, and students can have a really nice visual of what the expectations are for the cleaned up station or lab materials. So here's an example from um, another lab I did recently, we have the picture of the bin as the students are expected to reset it. I also include a countdown timer for my for my cleanup times and then a list of what needs to be refilled. Sometimes I'll include what needs to be thrown away, how it can be cleaned up as well, but it's nice to have all that information on one slide and you can just leave it projected while you walk around and monitor the cleanup. All right, number three, daily forms. I use these all the time. So because these Again, I work at a school that uses Google uh, Apps for Education. I use Google Forms, but you can do these with other online forms as well. I use these for digital bathroom pass. I use these for check-ins. I use these for figuring out uh, where students might want to sit in the next quarter so they can be used for preferences or they can be used for formative assessment. Um, but I'll show you real quick some of the forms that I use frequently. This is the bathroom pass and uh, students can access this through a short URL, which I'll talk about in my next tip, and then they can enter very quickly their name and email address period, and then they ask my permission before they hit the submit button, um, and then that way I have a timestamp for when they filled out their bathroom pass and I know how long they're gone, and they are trained, they know they have three passes per quarter, and I can see on the back end who has used however many passes, and I can reset it and clear the data at the end of the quarter. So forms are great, and it's a really easy way to collect data from your class for multiple reasons. All right, let's talk about URL shorteners. I have my kids accessing a lot of websites or technology within the classroom. Some of these are videos, some of these are you know, things online, some of these are documents, and it's really great to use a URL sh shortener like bit.ly, bit.ly, or tinyurl. Google also has one as well. I like bit.ly. You can create an account and really easily uh, enter the URL you want to shorten and then edit the shortened URL. So this one was directed to a zombie video, and then I had the bit.ly created bit.ly slash zombie bio, and so it was really easy to create a really quick and, and short URL. I use these a lot, so again, my students access their bathroom pass through a, a tiny URL or a bit.ly, and they can access class videos through different bit.ly's as well, and then, you know, check-in forms if I have something that I create and I don't have time to post it to our LMS, you can just project a bit.ly or a, a URL and students can type that in really quickly. Again, there are always mistakes when students are entering URLs, so it's better if you can link it somewhere, but if you don't have the time or if you'd like to have a permanent link for students to access, this is a great resource. All right, tips five and six I'm kind of combining, and that is how I use uh, notes. So this is sort of my planning and to-do list system that I use with technology. And I really love, love Google Keep. There are plenty of other note-taking tools out there that teachers can use. Um, my preference for this is because you can easily customize it and create checkoff um, boxes when you are going through. So this is basically how I keep track of the to-dos I have for each of my preps. Um, I have another planning document that's much larger, but this is like my immediate to-dos. And as you can see, I have them pinned to the top. So whenever I access Google Keep, I can see for each course what I need to do. and I 
also can check these off and delete them. Um, as I go through too, you can also connect this to your email. So this is why this is tip five and six. If you have a Google Keep account in Google Email or Gmail, what you can do is click the little Google Keep icon on the side of your Gmail. And then if you have a common question that you answer frequently or something that you want a template for, what you can do is copy and paste it here. So frequently I get emails from students that say, when are your office hours? And so I can just highlight the section here and copy and paste it into my email text. And it saves me a lot of time from typing up that answer all the time. All right. And uh, lastly, too, if you want to keep like a digital record of things, this is another way to um, keep a template of something. So Google Keep Notes and templates are my tips five and six. And so this is a document that I keep running throughout the year for common comments that I have when I'm providing feedback to students if I'm giving digital feedback. So again, we do use Google Docs in our school, but if you use any other sort of digital document system, you could do this on your own on a Word doc or anything else that you have. And so for an assignment, this is a particular PCR assignment, I have things that I've caught frequently in different students' work. And so what I've done is I've typed out that comment here. And then when I'm working, I can open one window with the comments page and open the other window with the students' work page and have them both up on my screen at the same time. And then I don't have to retype the same comment over and over if I just need to copy and paste this if I see a common mistake. All right, tip number seven. I coach students on study tips and better study practices all the time. And so I've created a few digital resources for my students that I can just send them if they are struggling with taking good notes or studying properly. And so I have both video resources and a document that I have in um, my digital tools. And I can share this with them, especially if they reach out to me over email and say, hey, I've really been struggling trying to uh, understand this topic or study for this material. And so I can provide them with this resource that I have that I think has been very useful for a lot of students. So having a digital resource for something that is a frequent concern is really nice for, for me as a teacher. All right, number eight, fair use images. I have tried really hard in the past few years to only use images that are not copyrighted and don't have any sort of license on them in my test and or in my classroom and assessment and video materials. So this is really hard because it's so easy to just do a Google image search and copy and paste and insert whatever image you want, but you really shouldn't be doing that. And so this has been a personal goal for me, but there are a lot of good sites that have fair use images or images without uh, any sort of licensing restrictions on them that you can use for your classes. It may take a little extra time, but um, my favorite sites to go to for this are Unsplash, which has really pretty images. They don't always get as specific as you want. Pixabay, which has images and illustrations and vector graphics as well. And then of course, Wikimedia Commons. Now on each of these sites, it'll tell you whether or not you're free to use this on any of your materials, if you need to credit anybody or give any sort of attribution, but plenty of the materials are royalty free and you can use them. You don't need to credit them in the for most cases. So I love these three resources and I'm trying my best to include both diverse images in my materials, but also uh, images that are royalty free. All right, number nine, this one saves me all the time. I set calendar alerts for any of the duties and responsibilities that I have that are on a recurring basis because as a teacher, things can get really busy throughout the day. And so I have several duties throughout the week. For example, I have a lunch duty. And so one of my lunch duties I have set as a recurring event and I have a 10 minute <laughs> alert prior to it. So um, if I'm teaching, I get an alert uh, on my, I can have it sent to my watch or my computer or my phone. Um, and so that way I don't miss uh, duty ever in, um, in my school responsibilities. And so this is really nice. And uh, you can set up the calendar to uh, turn on the event whenever you need and turn on the alerts whenever you need to. For my early morning duty, sometimes I have the alert set for the night before, so I don't forget to wake up early to be there for that. All right, lastly, number 10, the homework or daily calendar. This is a huge resource that I use all the time. I use a Google Doc that I can update whenever I need, so it's always live and any changes students will always access. This is much better than printing it out and then having to tell students to make changes to the calendar. And so I include the most recent week at the very top of the document and then all the recurring weeks are below so they can kind of scroll backwards and see what happened throughout a week. I keep this really simple and just sort of have a generic list of what we did in class and what the homework is. Now, now, I don't have the full agenda or all of the objectives here because that they can get in class and we have other makeup procedures for that. But this is a really good way for students to get a glimpse about what is going to be going on in the week, to take a peek at what's coming up. If they're going to be absent, they can take a 
glance at that. Um, they can see what was for homework. And so I use this for my students and myself to keep track of what's going on. You can use it just for yourself. Um, for my, some of my older students, I have a more detailed calendar. So here's a view again, and you can see that bit.ly is how the students can access it. They can also bookmark it, and then they can see the updated changes as well. Um, but for my older students, I can also have a more detailed calendar for my anatomy classes, for example, that has um, a little bit more detailed by detailed and assignment list. But this is a, just a general overview, and students seem to really appreciate this, especially when they're out or if they want to plan ahead and see what is going on in class. All right, guys, so that was my top 10 teacher tech tips just for general tips and strategies that I use in the classroom that save me a lot of time. Uh, hope you enjoyed.